Yeah. Um, so we do have a little bit more, so don't leave yet. We have an outro session, and also we plan on have talking, there was some request to talk a little bit about AI code generation and things like that. Um, should we talk about the AI code stuff first? So what are the specific questions? Maybe we can add a section. Let's see, what do people think here? What should we talk about, if anything? So who uses AI to make code? I must say that I do not right now. I have now started using it all the time mm -hmm. since my employer is um, providing the license, mm -hmm. then why not? So yeah, GitHub Copilot. Yeah. So how does and, it work? Um, it essentially makes suggestions based on the code you have right now. And there is a chat interface as well. So you can ask it to write some code that does X. But um, the interface that, that works better actually is usually the code completions. Mm -hmm. And it it's mainly like, uh, there's always been this code completion um, systems that try to guess the kind of code you would want to add and um, allow you to, for example, write um, in languages that have more boilerplate code, code um, create a class, um, like write all the boilerplate code for, for a class uh, with a couple okay. of um, typing, a couple of uh, yeah. keystrokes. Um, like all and the Copilot standard. is a mo doing a lot of that for me. I see. So like um, all the standard it, arg parse stuff that I'd always be making. Yeah. Do yeah. That. Okay. But it um it goes a little bit beyond, but it cannot do anything really new or really complicated. So it, mm -hmm. it's just this basic, um, relatively yeah. basic things. Like it will usually have a suggestion for even more complicated things, but it's more often than not that it's you just have to go and change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it's only the basic structure that's correct. Yeah. But it, it's still doing a lot of work though. It's, I don't know, how would I evaluate? Like how much more, um, how much time is it saving? Mm -hmm. Like 50% or a bit more of actual coding time. Yeah. Um. What's the license of the generated code? For Copilot, um, it's essentially they just give you the copyright. Okay. As long as, you know, as the usual warning is, it, it might in some, I think, relatively rare cases output mm -hmm. code that is an exact copy of something that already is out there. Um, in fact, it will do that very often if you take something really simple, but that's just like you would type it out by hand in exactly the same way anyway. Mm -hmm. So that uh, code is very structured. Yeah. So there's a lot of exact copies out there. But um, but yeah, I mean, at some point when it gets complicated enough, you have to like, you have to know <laughs> yourself that it's not a copy of something. And that's um, yeah. Well, okay. that's a big caveat. Yeah. But so, yeah, otherwise, um, usually they just give you the um, the copyright because otherwise, like the the service model wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I heard that we should do the outro before this discussion to before people leave. So. Uh, okay. Mix that up. So Samantha, yeah. um, would you like to grab the screen and summarize everything for us and tell us what we should do next? Yes, hello. Okay. Hello, hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes. And can you see my screen on? Yes, I can see. It's now also on the stream. Okay, thank you very much, Jarno and Richard, for this very interesting session. So this was now the very last session of our of, of our workshop, but 
it's not the very last thing that uh, you can join for this course. So stay with me for a moment to tell you more about that. So this was the Code Refinery Workshop um, for this spring. We would like to thank you, the participants, very much for participating, putting so many questions and so good feedback after each day in our collaborative document and discussing the questions and like being very active there. We'd also like to thank our team leaders and hosts that uh, have made this possible to spread to even more people and provide like more personal feed, uh, more personal support to some of our participants here. Um, then also a very big thank you to all of our instructors of this workshop. It was a quite big group this time. I think it went all in all very, very well. Then we also had some um, people working in the background that have so far never appeared on stream that were answering the questions in the collaborative document um, in addition to the instructors. And then we also had some local partners that um, hosted the rooms there and answered questions. So you all make these workshops possible and so enjoyable. Thank you very much. Um, Jan and Richard have already told you about the feedback section. So if you go to the collaborative document and in the very bottom, we have our feedback a little bit about today. And then you can also let us know what you thought overall about this workshop, no matter if you joined all the days or just a few of them, like let us know how you liked this workshop, how you liked this uh, format, uh, things that we can do better, things that you really much like that we should not get rid of and all these kind of things. And if you come with come up with something later, you can also send us an email to support at coderefinery.org. Or you can also, and you are all very welcome to also without feedback, uh, join our chat. It's uh, on Zulip. So you can find this behind the link. Actually, is this document linked from the collaborative document? Oh. If not, I would like to ask one of my... Yes colleagues here to link that so that you can click those links also. Um, then if you have struggled with some of the exercise instructions or found some broken links or have some um, update suggestions for our lesson material, now during the first week of this course you have learned how to do issues, pull requests, so you can practice that on our lesson material. And we are very happy to get also like feedback that way. And we are always at least trying to develop this uh, workshop materials further uh, latest before the next workshop. So we are really relying on your feedback here. And also um, we will take a look at the questions that you ask and see if we can improve the material to make these things more clear. Um, at some point in the future, you will likely receive a post-workshop -work survey. Um, that is then about how your work in the long run has been affected by visiting this workshop. So we know that there is like a lot of topics here and it's a lot of things to take in at uh, so, short, so short time. But maybe after like a few weeks, you may get back to some of the topics and you may get an understanding to where these topics can help you in your work. Uh, so that's why it will take some time before you will get this workshop, but it will come. And uh, if you get it, then please answer it. That helps us a lot to continue the work that we are doing. Um, yeah, because it has been a lot of material, a lot of possibly new concepts for you. Um, this is just a starting point and there is so much more to learn and uh, dig into. You may have noticed in this week too that we tried to show some of the exercises on stream, but there were also in many lessons many more exercises that we did not go through. So you can go back to the material, look through them, try to do them yourself. And if you do that within the next two weeks, and you have some uh, trouble with this, you can also come to our bring your own code sessions. And this is also if you have some more questions like we had this morning, for example, for the automated testing, many people were asking something about like how to do this, how to apply this to your own code. If you have 
questions like this, then these bring your own code sessions are a very good place to come. Many of our instructors will be there and uh, we will try to help you further with the topics discussed in this workshop. So it's the next Tuesdays, um, one, two, three, and uh, the link will be sent to all registered participants. Um, as mentioned many times already, our materials are publicly available. They are all open source and will continue to be updated. You can also reuse them for your own workshops. And this link leads you to the main overview of all the lessons. So there's not just um, the lessons that we went through here in this workshop, but there's also a few more there. So you can go and take a look. The videos will stay on YouTube. You can always like rewatch them. They also have these little nice section tags that you can jump around to the topics that are of interest to you. And then we have um, a lot of local uh, partners that, uh, you, that provide support. Um, with the topics around this workshop and you can find the list of the well the list of the partners here for Finland, Sweden, Norway and Denmark um, many also with their link to the training calendar where there is like further training going more into high performance computing or I don't know what we other have scientific computing with Python and these kind of things. So you can check them out. And some of them are also not necessarily only for the group, for example, at Aalto uh, University in Finland, but some of these trainings are also open for all. So even if you are not in these areas, it I would recommend to check out the training calendars of these institutions. And then again, a reminder about the certificates. If you want one, check out the course web page. Can do that briefly. Um, um, up top, you can find this tab to certificates. If you click that, there's instructions on what you can do to get a certificate for this course. And then how how you can support us. So we are a project, um, and it always helps to like tell everyone about us, tell your friends if you like this course, um, tell them about our materials, our web page, um, use our social media handles. We have been trying to post a little bit about this workshop too, so use those to reshare your experience about it. We are also eagerly reading these posts, so um, please make use of that. And um, we will probably have more workshops of this type further developed in some way. Um, so you can always come back as a team leader, for example. So you can bring your colleagues, sit together in a room and watch the stream together and then do the exercises together, for example, like some of you have already done. And then you can also um, become part of the Code Refinery team. In general, the project lives currently still from in-kind contributions by the organizations, meaning that our organizations sponsor our time for the project. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you and especially your organization, please get in touch. Um, as mentioned, we live in the chat. So that's where really everything goes, where we also have a nice help channel where you can add your questions that you have, for example, surrounding this workshop or also Later, when you implement these things, you can go and ask for help there. There's a lot of so-called research software engineers, especially around that really enjoy helping people with their computational research challenges. And then we also have a newsletter about once or twice a year where we update about upcoming workshops or this. We recently switched our newsletter provider, so let's hope this goes well. Um, you can find the link on our web page behind the newsletter. And then I mentioned already this research software engineers. So many of our instructors are actually research software engineers. And uh, we also have, um, what is it actually now? An association, the Nordic Research Software Engineers, where you can find the link behind this 
one here. I think it's just Nordic minus RSE dot org. Let's see. Um, and so the research software engineers, they are like these people that are between the researchers and the software developers that combine this experience of both of these worlds. And um, basically the code refinery workshop could be also called like a introduction to research software engineering. So if you liked what, what you learned here and would like to go further in that, then the Nordic RSE community is a very nice place to be in. There is uh, basically we live also in the chat, in the same chat as code refinery. Uh, in the Nordic RSE channel, we sometimes have some like seminar series and upcoming now also a conference in Espo in Finland in the end of May uh, that you can still submit contributions to that you can still um, come and join us for. And we are also on Twitter uh, X, sorry. And that was it with the wrap up to my fellow colleagues here on call still have to add something to this. What other upcoming courses do we have? Someone commented on that in the feedback. Yes. Um, I guess the next one that is by some of the code refinery community is the tools and techniques, Tuesday's tools and techniques for HPC, but we don't have a event page for that yet will come up in April and you can probably find this information soon on the Aldo yeah. training page, I would guess. So the, the other courses of the similar form in the beginning of June, we have a live stream kickstart course mainly hosted by Aalto University, but each year some others join. And it's about scaling your work from your local things to a computer cluster and ah okay i'm under attack mm. so okay well at least you get some entertainment here um yeah, and then in the autumn, we have a yearly Python for scientific computing course, which is quite similar to what we're doing here. And who knows, maybe more in the future. Through Code Refinery, sometimes we advertise other courses by partners, which should be of similar quality. Should we go back to the notes? Yes, what other? So one of the biggest changes we've had is we made the second week more demo-based rather than exercise-based. And we'd like your comments on that. So part of the reason was that we didn't have as many exercises the second week anyway. So when people came prepared for exercises, then there were not enough and helpers, the people who were prepared to help with the exercises didn't have enough to do. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, any other comments? I think, do any other instructors want to join here and give general questions and answers? Uh, yeah. Should we? Oh, Radovan is here. Do you have any thoughts on AI yeah. coding? Yeah, first of all, thanks for today. I was watching it and I was typing. Really enjoyed the many questions. So I had to really type a lot. It was pretty cool today. Yeah, I mean, AI coding exists. exists. It's an important tool. There. Do you use AI think, coding much? Oh uh, yes, I do. Okay, I do. So AI assisted coding. 
So sometimes mm -hmm. I write comments and then it tries the code or I write the code and it tries the comments for me, mm -hmm. or I ask it to write a test, or I write the test first and ask it to write the code that matches the test. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it saves of... a lot of time. Mm -hmm. There were a few questions and points about um, translating, and that's kind of one way of thinking about what these um, AI models are really good at. Mm -hmm. It's um, essentially, um, well, I guess there's two big things, and one is translating from one format to another. So that could would include also um, taking a code and writing tests for it, or taking a test and writing code that fulfills that test and mm -hmm. um, like sort of trying to go from one type of uh, information to another, or just going from one language to another. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that works really well. So I, for instance, I'm now learning R. So I'm a beginner in R. So, so what I've tried a few times is that I have a Python code and I ask it to translate it to R, and then I have a really good starting point. So it can help me actually learn the language. Mm -hmm. I can see like, what, okay, this is something that works and I can study it and I can improve it and maybe it's not perfect. But I believe that it can also help beginners yeah. to get yeah. started and learn coding. So the other big thing that is really good at is just remembering stuff. Um, so it's like, in principle, Google also is useful for finding any or any web search is good for finding um, all of the same information, but this is more integrated to uh, the actual coding workflow. So it, it can not just find the documentation for some library, but actually suggest how to use it in your um, in your code. Although the information does tend to be old pretty quickly, so you have to take that into account. Yeah. So, so from the whole workshop, what are your main takeaway messages that you'd like people to carry with them? Anyone? Version control is super useful. It makes everything possible. Yeah. Somehow. Everything runs on top of version control. And um, publishing your code as early as possible is relatively, it's easy. Mm -hmm. And it enables a lot of useful things. Yeah. So what do you mean by publishing as soon as possible? You mean putting on, like making it available by GitHub? or similar yeah or at least putting it online somewhere and preferably with the license yeah because github and many of these platforms they provide free stuff to public projects usually so the sooner yep. you go public the sooner you can start using these yeah okay does anyone else have any other comments in the notes? Um, or should we wrap it up? I see a question from earlier, where to find more resources and examples on modular development and testing for research? What would you say there? Hmm. It's a great question. I'm not sure there is this like one resource for it. Yeah. I would study, have a look at the code that you are using. Yeah. And how do they do testing? How do they structure their code? Yeah. But it can be a little bit too big. So maybe look at a smaller project. Yeah. Um, have a look at other projects, how they do it. I'm not aware of like one book that right. will discuss this in a one place. Are you aware of any other things that cover these topics specifically for research in this much or more detail? 
do most researchers sort of figure this out themselves or how does how does it go I mean I really don't know I learned this sort of by following other projects and having to figure it out myself so that's why I like this course so much because it can save other people that effort I have a there feeling of these... go ahead. Go ahead. I have a feeling that still a lot of it is figuring it out yourself but at least you see the vision and well if our audience is researchers then you're good at figuring out new things so as long as you know what to look for, you can find and adapt. There are a couple of papers papers that are nice, which is this 10 simple rules to, et cetera, et cetera, 10 simple rules to make your code more. Oh, mm -hmm. they, they are nice. They are good summaries. Yeah. And I guess it would be nice if we make, made a collection and listed all of them. There's a link to a book called The Turing Way, which I know about. Does it cover the details of coding? I see chapters on code testing, code review, and so on. So I guess that would be a good thing to look at that goes into some good depth. Um, yeah. Okay, should we call it good then? We're almost at the hour now. So, um, thanks to everyone who attended. And, yeah, I can just say we will send an email to everybody with some summary. We we'll, don't forget that. In a week, uh, so next Tuesday, the Tuesday after, you can show up at these sessions, bring your code, bring your questions. It will be on Zoom. It will not be recorded, not streamed. We will email you the connection details. And I hope people show up and that we can and show up with questions. Yes. OK, well, should I hang it up then? Thanks a lot and good luck in your future research. Thanks everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.